Uh, now, it should be one of the most special, if not the most exhausting moments of a mother's life. Yet many women are saying that midwife shortages have left them feeling like cattle. A study by the National Childbirth Trust warns that too many women are facing long delays in getting pain relief, with half experiencing at least one red flag event during birth. Well, GP Dr Ellie Cannon is with us in the studio. Um, and, and, and Dr Ellie, I mean, this is quite disturbing to hear that mothers feel they are being treated like cattle. You will deal with a lot of mothers coming into your um, surgery after they've given birth, telling you their experiences. What's the overall feeling of, of the service they're getting when they're giving birth? I think generally it is good and it's certainly good enough, but it's very worrying if women at this time when anyway they're feeling sort of very sort of rocky and very vulnerable in terms of their mental health are made to feel like cattle. I mean, that's a terrible, obviously, that's a sort of terrible indictment of the service. And also the sort of physical dangers as well. So if we're what we call red flag events, so that means sort of medical dangers, medical emergencies. So for example, in a woman who's given birth, things to do with blood loss, things to do with blood pressure going up very high. These could be medical emergencies. The woman herself could be in danger, the baby could be in danger. So that's very worrying in 2017 in the UK. You know, this report out for the National Federation of Women Institutes and the NCT today says that half of women, 50% of women that give birth, experience at least one of those red flag uh, events during childbirth that you were talking about. Let's join um, Nicola Hatch Lightness, who um, is a mother uh, who had a, a rather nasty experience, uh, Nicola, when you were giving birth to your baby. Tell us what happened to you. Good morning. Um, it wasn't so much when I was actually in labour. I had a very straightforward labour and was very well looked after um, by the midwives um, antenatally and during my labour itself. Um, it was more once I'd had my baby, um, my midwife care completely changed hands um, from one town to the next due to an admin error. I'd been sent to the wrong town initially for my midwife care. Um, and it all just became very fragmented and um, having suffered from anxiety beforehand, um, I was, to be honest with you, a nervous wreck with a newborn and didn't know what I was doing and would turn up to appointments in tears um, and had no home visits barring the first immediate one uh, 24 hours after birth and was then expected to take my newborn for a half hour walk to our local clinic for visits. Um, and it just didn't sit very well with someone that suffers from anxiety and, and you know, didn't feel very confident in their abilities as a new mother. So Nicola, you weren't seeing the same person consistently in getting the, you know, um, the same level of care as you went along. You were seeing lots of different people. Is that what was happening? I saw the same midwife or the same one or two midwives uh, during my antenatal care. So uh, when I was pregnant, I saw the same midwives. And uh, during labour, I had um, two midwives. And then all of a sudden, due to an admin error, my midwife care was switched to a clinic which um, is nearer to me, but it just meant that at that point forward I saw lots of different midwives and they didn't know me and I didn't know them and they didn't know um, really how to react to my anxiety um, and didn't quite understand why I was so nervous of having this newborn. Um, Dr Ellie, that's Nicola's story there. I mean, what should new mothers expect from, their, from the care they get after they've given birth? Well, new mothers are supposed to have postnatal visits at home from a midwife. That's nice guidelines. And certainly there are situations, unfortunately, where that doesn't happen. Um, obviously, mental health is absolutely crucial in that postnatal period. So a mum can look after herself, but also her baby. I mean, that can be very serious. We're not talking okay. breastfeeding. Yeah, which is one all of, all of, all all of those sort of things. But things like the sort of real genuine anxiety and depression that mums are vulnerable to. Um, and that can only be picked up if you're seeing somebody. And even better, if you're seeing somebody that knows you. Is it down to luck, in a way, what mm. kind of treatment you get and what day you turn up on for, to have your baby? So I really wanted an epidural and um, I didn't get any. I had three children, I didn't get any epidurals ever because they couldn't ever find the yeah. man with the epidural. <laughs> I mean, where was he? Um, and one of my children was born with a cord around the neck and I would have thought a doctor would see that baby because he was mm. blue mm. at some point before I left the hospital. That never happened. And on another occasion, I was told to go down to the GP surgery 
after I got home from hospital, having given birth three hours before. Is that, yeah. is that a normal I think, I think, I think there's women? a bit of postcode lottery, I think, unfortunately. I think there's definitely luck. There will have been checks that would have been done by a midwife in those situations, and your baby would have been deemed to have been OK. Um, obviously, postnatal care has really changed in the last few decades. Women used to have a baby and stay in hospital for 10 days, even after a normal delivery. What, what would your advice be, Dr Ellie? Because as a mother going to the hospital to give birth to your child, mm. you're in a very vulnerable position. Sure, sure. You're very emotional. You want to trust these doctors, nurses and midwives. Yeah. That they know what they're doing. If you're feeling uncomfortable mm. and you don't feel you're getting the best care, mm. what should you do? Because that's often the, the, the stories that come out of these hospitals is that there's so many different people dealing with them. They don't know who to talk to. They get different stories. It's fragmented. What would your advice be to combat that? My advice would be that before you're actually even in that situation of giving birth and going into labour, make sure you know who your GP is, you make sure you've got a relationship with them, so at least you've got them as a port of call for after the baby, so you can go in either for yourself or with the baby. Within labour wards, there will always be, obviously, a head midwife, somebody in charge who you can So don't be afraid to, to ask for them Don't be afraid and trust your instincts. Even a mum who's had a baby for an hour will know what is right and what is wrong, and you should ask and not be afraid to do that. Okay. Uh, Dr Ellie, thanks uh, so much for coming in and sharing your thoughts as ever. Uh, Nicola, many thanks indeed for sharing your uh, experiences uh, with us. Uh,